Hope you're having a great day. Jordan Trask here from Prefocus, and I've made it to day seven. I did a week of the 25 days of Christmas. It's really tough come, sitting here coming up with some ideas, but I'm basically running down random industries and coming up with a holiday campaign um, that not just helps them drive awareness and potential sales right now for the holiday season, but helps them sustain their business, drive loyalty, and uh, you know really build recognition for the value of the value of the service or product they provide. So today I drew um, equipment rental business and I think this is what I'm really excited about because this is a, a potential client that I really have a lot of fun with because I think there's not really one specific audience that you can nail down. I keep saying that nail down or focus on, um, you know, that's like, hey, this is the go-to. This is my ideal target audience. Everything I do, I wanna speak to them. When it comes to equipment rental, I think there's uh, tons of avenues that you can capture um, that can drive residual uh, revenue down the road. So without going into too much detail, um, I want to talk to you about why um, you know I don't want to focus on the primary target audience today. And I think that's because uh, you know in most cases it's going to be general contractors, self-employed general contractors, some of the smaller guys, maybe plumbers, journeymen, handymen that. Uh, they have their own tools and trucks and stuff, maybe a crew, but they're not really the uh, prime time players in the construction industry. They're kind of more uh, along the lines of the repair, the smaller jobs. Um, and now, now I've, I've worked for electricians in the past and, and my dad has done framing and, you know, you know, building multiple houses at once or building multiple businesses or commercial buildings at once. And, you know, you'll, you'll dabble in some equipment rentals, but for the most part, um, those types of businesses are for, uh, not for uh, the huge construction companies because those types of people have their own equipment. I'll get more into that here at the end. Um, but I'm going to focus on kind of the average Joe kind of guy like me or maybe somebody that's at home that, that needs to tackle something during the holiday season. Uh, or maybe it's a, it's a husband or a friend uh, or a neighbor maybe that uh, you know needs a gift card or something. Uh, to get something done that you've seen them struggling with uh, and and you know that that person or you yourself could you know use uh, better equipment to get something done so I think you know what I'm saying here so really just to jump right into the strategy I would really want to focus on uh, as many people just like this whole theme of uh, you know the 25 days here uh, many different uh, variety I guess people uh, versions of people as we can in one 30 second commercial to 60 second commercial and so when it comes to you know types of people again we're not talking about race we're not talking about necessarily a, a geographical location we're talking about personalities right you know when when it comes to marketing you want to develop personas you know your your ideal personas four or five of them that are your go-to customers that really value what you do and uh, when it comes to equipment rental, I think this could be one that maybe maybe they discover, maybe they haven't, but I haven't really seen a lot of ads or marketing strategies that focus on the average Joe. Um, and when it comes to, uh, you know, buying equipment, you know, that's not really, you know, you could get people tools and stuff like that for Christmas. I got a couple tools over the years for Christmas, but it's not like something that I use a lot. It's kind of something that my wife... Uh, saw that I needed or heard me say that I wanted and got it for me. And sometimes, you know, stuff like this, it, it's a lot cheaper, number one, to rent it. Um, but it's a lot smarter sometimes to just rent something than to buy it. Uh, you talk about storage space, you talk about maintenance, you talk about uh, just general upkeep and taking care of it if you have kids. You know, leaving stuff sitting around in your garage or your shop or your house even is, you know, asking for it to get destroyed. Um, and then another thing really just wanted to point out before I jump into this that, you know, the the, the audience that we're going to focus on is, is not going to be as educated in construction and stuff. They're going to be skilled, competent in, in doing things around the house, you know, or business themselves. Uh, but for the most part, they need to be educated. Uh, we need to be cautious about the way that we go about promoting stuff. And that's where, you know, that's something I want to have a discussion with the underwriter about with, for the business. Um, you know, what, what are... What are some of the the things that uh, you know disclosures that we want to make sure we get across before we're just pumping out all these this content or this this marketing strategies to target the average Joe? Um, you know, co running cords. You know, if you don't have a fence, uh, turning the things off, storage. Um, 
you know, taking care of them, obviously, insurance, stuff like that, making sure that no one's gonna go use them, cut their finger off if you got a tile saw or something sitting in the backyard, a concrete blade or something. So um, those are all things that we would need to consider. But for me, initially, I would jump right into this equipment rental uh, TV commercial during the holidays, starting during Thanksgiving. Uh, I focus on as, as many people as I can, doing things around the house, specifically things during the holiday season that they would need equipment for. So initially you think of the one guy, um, that's typically me that's up on the roof, scaling the side of his house to put up his Christmas lights. And I think you start off the commercial with that guy, that's with the staple gun, staple on the side of his house, that he rented a ladder, uh, a good extension ladder this year, he's not hanging off his <laughs> the peak of his roof like I do. and. You know, he's he's looking really, feeling really good about it. And he spent the 20 bucks or whatever it was to do it. And then he looks over to his neighbor as he staples that that string of lights on and he sees his neighbor's got a boom lift. And his neighbor's this real arrogant guy. Uh, you know, maybe he has a little bit more money, right? He can just splurge and he does all these things. Uh, wasteful spending type things. Maybe he doesn't have as many kids as you. Uh, it's just him and his wife and his dog. And he's got this boom lift, putting stuff up with this with a super nail gun, right? <laughs> and, a, and a compressor and a ex uh, hose extension and all these things and he's just doing it really easy. He's probably got a space heater up there on his boom lift and all these things. We're basically painting this picture of a neighbor, neighbor uh, rivalry. And I think then you can kind of go maybe down the street or a different uh, uh, climate altogether, right? And then you have a person may be sitting in their living room that they went out to rent a sawzall just to trim their tree a little bit to make it look a bit a little bit nicer. Then you have this really puny looking guy that's out with his family cranking a chainsaw for the first time. Maybe they all got their smartphones. They're just really kind of uh, not outdoorsy people. And this guy's out going after it, chopping a tree down uh, with a chainsaw that he rented. Um, you know, and maybe then you have grandma and grandpa down the street or in a different scene that's lo <laughs> that's loading their truck or their trailer. Maybe they're getting ready to go in their RV on a road trip to see their grandkids and stuff. And they're loading the trailer with a with a forklift of all the presents because we know grandma and grandpa like to spend a lot of money. So these are all like different ways that you could kind of tie in a message that shows, hey, you could use equipment around. It's not just for construction projects. It's not just for... Uh, you know tearing stuff down or building stuff up. It's it's it could be used You know just for a couple dozen dollars here and there to come rent something that you need to get something done Even if it's loading some Christmas presents into the back of the truck or trailer um, and then I think you know we want to want to uh, You know kick it up a notch a little bit too and then Because uh, this is a real boom 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 right it's a TV commercial you don't have a lot of time uh, you know go down this the street to where uh, or maybe again another climate like Mississippi where you have uh, I know this weekend last couple weekends what I spent a lot of time doing is cleaning up my leaves and a lot of the, the tree limbs that have fallen and stuff so maybe I rent a wood chipper maybe I have a push uh, a push blower a leaf blower instead of using my leaf blower and uh, using my tractor to mulch stuff up maybe I'm pulling maybe I rent a, <coughs> a leaf picker up or a mulcher or something else I can hook onto my tractor Point being, during the holidays, uh, me at least and all my neighbors and, and everybody else in this area, even going over to Alabama and Arkansas and Texas, some of the places that we've been, uh, Midwest, where my mom's dad live up there, my sister, um, they're picking up leaves right now. They're blowing them. And so that's what they're doing. They're, they're doing that Thanksgiving week and the weekend after Thanksgiving leading up to Christmas. Um, so that's relevant. It doesn't necessarily have to do with the holidays, but you're kind of tying that in as we're showing as much variety as we can and then you know maybe we venture up to Minnesota right and you got a guy snow blowing uh, you know maybe they're all preparing to have people over right we're preparing to host uh, Thanksgiving or host a Christmas dinner or a holiday party or a gift, gift exchange and we're trying to get the yard presentable you know and then maybe we go to Arizona or Florida uh, New Mexico whatever and you got somebody with a yard tiller and then maybe they rented a lawnmower uh, Maybe their lawnmower broke, they had to go rent one, or maybe they just wanted a riding mower to get it done quick, and then you got the guys out tilling his yard and, <laughs> you know, trying to make it look nice and stuff, and his wife's like, hey, they're going to be here in a couple hours, you know, you got to get done. He's like, oh, I got this, and you know, you just got all these different types of people, different backgrounds, different lifestyles, different homes, right, that are all, that all need equipment, and even if it's a local company, 
you could do it really cool where you, you just encompass all the stuff of the local climate, right? Uh, and you tie all that in with as many different types of people and as many different types of things that you're doing. Everybody needs that equipment. Um, and then maybe you have, what else could I think of? Um, you know, maybe one of those big generators where you have everybody plugs, that's where they plug their lights in. Uh, or you have an air compressor that's used um, to pump up all the, the Christmas displays that you're putting up in front of your house. Like there's so many different ways that we could do this. Um, uh, maybe you're pumping up all the tires you know, I got six kids, so when you buy a bunch of bikes, then, you know, you don't want to be hand pumping up those tires. You want to have a compressor or something that you can fill that stuff up. Um, and then maybe, you know, you have, like, just to tie off the whole commercial, uh, you maybe have this guy in a Santa hat and a Christmas sweater with the lights dim at, like, the the Elk Lodge or, you know, the local community center, and he's 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 push or riding or has one of those push sweepers that he's just cleaning up, maybe kind of smiling a little bit, thinking about with a candy cane in his mouth or drinking some eggnog or something, just really reminiscing of the time that he had um, and how, you know, fulfilling it is for him to be the one or her to be the one to sit there and clean it all up. I think, um, you know, that would be a really uh, cool commercial from start to beginning of the holiday season to be able to set stuff up, to uh, prepare stuff, for the holidays, prepare people to be over to cleaning it up, to enjoying the toys, the festivities and stuff uh, with an equipment rental company, right? Super random. Uh, but that stuff is relevant. You know, you, you publish that, you spend a lot of money. I think it would be a good strategy, like I said before, I think I said it before, to spend a good amount of money during the holidays because your return is higher. You're not, you know, you're not like a, a copy editing service that I started off on day one with where you're maybe only making a couple dozen dollars you know, you can make a couple hundred, a couple thousand dollars in one weekend from one ad. Um, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be specifically just for the holidays, right? Something that you can use evergreen or publish on social media or YouTube that uh, people could, you know, be entertained by watching and maybe learn something from by watching it. Um, so that's what I would do. Uh, I think, man, that would be a, a dream dream client right now to be able to, hey, I want to spend a good good money on a on a good ad and I need some help knowing where to position it. Uh, the equipment rental would be something that would be really cool d during the holidays. I think uh, the primary target audience is probably a downtime. They're probably spending time with their family. They're probably uh, off on vacation, uh, not working, right? They probably worked really hard all year for this specific time. They're not going to be out running equipment. But at the end of the day, it's good because you're not... Um, you're not really tarnishing anything. You're not really creating any controversy. You're not, uh, you know, because your main competition, in my opinion, if you're an equipment rental company, is the contractors themselves, the the major contractors. You know, I'm going to hire a major construction company to come out here that has all the equipment. Um, the the handyman guys, stuff like that, they probably like these types of commercials because it, it allows, um, you know, maybe them to be hired to help, and, and then they'll, they'll go use this stuff too. So I don't think it's really too... Uh, confrontational I think uh, you know for the most part you know uh, it's not gonna really irritate anybody I guess is what I'm saying here you're not uh, your main customer the the contractor is not gonna be upset that you're you're promoting that people can do it themselves because you're being cautious and you're not telling people that they can do it themselves uh, in most cases the people that you're marketing to already do a lot of stuff themselves right they're competent uh, it's what they're into. They spend good uh, quality family time doing this stuff. They're experienced. They're they're able to do it. Um, the general contractors and the handymen and stuff uh, typically serve those people that don't that don't want to do it. That don't want to mess with equipment. That want to pay somebody to do it. So I think it's a really good uh, balance here to to have a good campaign that doesn't step on anybody's toes. Uh, that allows you to still market to some of those general contractors that use you uh but also um uh, create new opportunities with a target audience that maybe is like man you know I, I could do that i could really do that and i don't need to pay you know five six thousand dollars to have somebody come do it myself and pay for the time the labor the materials uh and the equipment itself right that all that stuff is in is encompassed in pricing uh that they can maybe see that visually see that that's something that uh you know that that they can they can manage on their own 
Um, but that, so that really made me think too, man, this could really turn into one of those, like a really strong campaign, like, you know, as far as a brand recognition camp type campaign for a business, for equipment rental company, like we're talking about foundational content here and, and, and helping people with do it yourself stuff. So, you know, I wrote a, wrote a follow up thing down here, just a couple of little notes that, um, you know, if you're, if you're planning on hosting an event, like this is what really initially made me what I initially thought of to do a campaign on, but it was just, it's too much. But if, if you're hosting an event, you want to do a video, uh, as far as equipment rental company, do a video that can encompass this, a long form video that you can put, uh, you know, on your website and stuff. That's more of, uh, educational, I guess, instead of it being a TV ad. Um, but it, but it connects with the same type of strategy, um, to be able to have a family that, uh, maybe wants to expand their space, their living space, or their, inter their entertainment capability before the holiday season starts. So what I was really thinking about is, uh, you know, pouring concrete. And um, you can go buy all that equipment if you want, but like I said at the beginning, it's going to be an awful lot of money. You can hire somebody to do it, but it's an awful lot of money for something that's really simple when really all that you need to do is level the ground, pour the concrete, um, maybe do some landscape, and buy some tables and chairs and with the money that you save, you could really, you know, add a lot of really cool effects to it, right? And this is something you can educate people on as an equipment rental business. Uh, nobody's going to be too upset that you're taking away business from them pouring a slab of concrete. But a homeowner like me or my neighbor um, might really uh, value being able to be shown, hey, you could do this, bro, or you could do this, uh, lady. <clears throat> and so really you got... Um, you got a family that you got, you got a trailer. Maybe they pick the stuff up. They get a sh uh, a truck, the they one of those big moving trucks or something. Or maybe it's just part of the service, right? That they it gets delivered. However, the process is, you know, we we walk through that, have the stuff delivered, or have it sitting in the driveway in a trailer, flatbed, have it pull all the stuff out, line it all up. I think we would really just need uh, maybe uh, probably not a backhoe or anything, not nothing too serious, but uh, like a bobcat. Um, you know, you probably have a material mover, like one of those, uh, just the, just gas powered or, uh, electric tubs that's, you know, has the handles on, you can move stuff. Um, you probably need, uh, a finisher. Um, what's that thing called? A screed, you know, flattener, uh, one of those fan things, um, I think it's called a finisher. I think I said that, and that's probably it. Maybe a tamper, uh, maybe like a plate tamper would be fine. Otherwise, you could just get a regular tamper. And if you don't know what all this stuff is, <laughs> call an equipment rental place. But you know, use the fork to do the video. You start off with the stuff getting unloaded, and then you have dad, the operator that knows how to drive the stuff, right? That is experienced, competent in doing these things. You know, he's not going to be reading directions. He knows what he's doing. He's going to jump in the bobcat, level the ground. Um, you know, a couple times, maybe hose it down with some water, um, and then we frame it. You know, you need, need maybe you need a nail gun too. Frame, frame up your uh, frame for the actual pour itself. Show how that's done really quick. It's really simple stuff. Use some stakes in the ground. Then we use we have the mixer. The mixer is moving. You know, have the family interacting. Maybe you know, playing in the concrete, whatever. Everybody ha has their own job. It gets poured. Then we use the screed. Have moms maybe using the screed to make it really smooth. Uh, and then, you know, the oldest son's using the finisher uh, to sit, to, to dry it. Uh, and, oh, yeah, the tamper. <clears throat> the tamper, basically what that is, is after you flatten the land, you want to make sure it's tamped down. It's kind of a weird word, but it basically compresses the ground down. It's really heavy. It just jumps, and it pushes the ground down. So you have a plate tamper that you can push. It's a lot bigger. It's maybe four by six feet, maybe not quite that big. And then you have a regular tamper that you hold. You can control it a little bit better, maybe for somebody that's not as strong, and it's it's a it's about a square foot, and so you can imagine um, how long that would take. But so that's why I would use the plate tamper. But you know, if you're on a budget, that's something that you could do, and you know, you just get it done, pour the concrete, you screed it out, finish it, and then you know, maybe use a seed spreader to to help uh, replant some grass around there, maybe plant some shrubs, uh, maybe use uh, a forklift to carry in some vegetation, right, for a garden or uh, 
some pavers or something like that. Really make, you could make a really nice area for a couple thousand dollars, you know, and rent all the equipment that you need. Probably wouldn't even cost a couple thousand dollars to pour some concrete, really just depending on the vegetation you have. And boom, you have another follow-up campaign for the strategy that you ran during the holiday season. Uh, during the spring, you could do something really simple. Keep it simple again, you know, from spring cleanup, you know, you have, uh, you know, your, your trimming of your trees, uh, planting of your trees, uh, uh, Cutting down of the trees with a chainsaw, you know, using saw saw, uh, you know, and then you have, um, you know, your wood chipper, uh, all these different things that you could use to just for one strategy, you have somebody that's uh, cutting down or planting trees, right? They may have some old trees in their backyard like I have, they cut them down, trim them up, cut them down, plant some new ones, and then use the mulcher or uh, the chipper, wood chipper to chop it all up. <laughs> and that's your commercial and then you know maybe then and, and you could roll it into woodwork and maybe you have some stuff that you know gets trimmed up chopped down and then uh, you use a wood planer maybe you got a wood planer I don't know if you could rent those and it, you know you, you cut wood pieces and then you start using it to whittle wood or to build something like holy cow like you could use all this stuff turn into a wood making campaign or that started from tree trimming all and all the equipment that you need you provide um, and then you roll into other spring, summer uh, projects that families could do. And you think of, think of the way Home Depot does stuff, you know, the power of the Home Depot or, you know, you could get this done in the weekend and all this type of ads that they do. I think that that's really effective to speak to a certain group of people. Now, if you're really able to educate people that, hey, this, this equipment's available. I don't have to spend thousands of dollars for it. Um, it's easy. Um, some of these projects uh, I don't need to hire somebody for. Uh, maybe I'm just overwhelmed or overthinking it. Or maybe I'm just out of fear. I don't want to do it. Um, you know, help help build up some confidence. You know, do testimonials, all these types of things that can continue to funnel into the encouragement of doing it yourself uh, with uh, out having to make the big investment. So, man, that was a really long one. I know I got really excited on that one, but at the end of the day, equipment rental, man, that's that could be a really fun client to work with, um, especially with the variety and, and types of clients or customers potential customers that you could be targeting. So uh, hopefully that, you know, gave you some ideas, even if you don't rent equipment, maybe you rent something else, maybe this, uh, you know, be a good thought starter for you. But either way, you know, no matter what you're doing, always be purposeful with everything that you do. And most importantly, always remember to pre-focus. If you don't know what that means, 30 minutes will get you a free consultation. Have a good rest of your week, guys.